but we should we should get started because we've got a very busy agenda to get through. So first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for coming today, joining finding us here on Zoom, which is great. This is our first meeting of 23, obviously. Um, and the first two meetings of this year, we plan to continue on Zoom. And then on the March meeting, we hope to return to the Point Loma Assembly uh, and run a hybrid meeting. So if people still want to join on Zoom, they can, but we'll also be able to get together in person. Um, so that's something we can celebrate. And then also this weekend, you know, we should be able to celebrate the Lunar New Year, but obviously with the very sad news that everybody probably saw this morning from Monterey Park in California, um, that celebration may be a little subdued. And also this weekend, we should be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Roe v. v. Wade. Um, but instead, we've got to spend our time organizing um, against the Dobbs decision that came down last year. So the theme in today's meeting, then um, we be kind of begin with some analysis um, of last year's or November's elections. Um, and then after that, uh, we have um, a representative here, Celsi Terra from um, Terra Lawson Rima's staff who's going to talk to us about boards and commissions. And then Western service workers will talk to us about the tamales and the drives they have coming up. And Susan will talk to us for a few minutes about the Women of Colour Raw, which is an event that's coming up at the beginning of February. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, Sonara, who many of you know, uh, as she's been a, uh, a member of the club for, for many, many years, um, and also more recently was just ratified as the new director of clubs for the San Diego County Party for all the Democratic clubs across the county. Uh, Sonara is the new director for that. And with that, Sonara, I will spotlight you and also hand over as co-host so you can share um, slides as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the warm welcome and I'm just here today to share some uh, turnout results from our last election and that's something that all the clubs have been looking at kind of going what happened. Now in our immediate area there wasn't um, a lot of very competitive races in the general it was more so in the primary but I'll be going over the county and um, kind of analysis of what happened. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Share, okay, great. Smaller, small screen. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I'm having a, there we go, a moment. Okay, great. So if we look at the county as a whole, um, we are a very democratic county. This is registered voters. So if we look just around the county, you see there are very few towns left in all of San Diego County where registration is more Republican than Democrat. So here's our scale. We're going from the most Democrat is the darkest blue, and that would be National City to the lightest uh, red, well, the darker red is the most Republican. And in that case, uh, the, the um, most Republican place today in all of San Diego County is Santee. But really we only have three jurisdictions where we would say that we have more, um, more Republicans than Democrats. And those are Poway, Santee and Coronado. And those aren't the biggest cities. Um, in, in San Diego County. So otherwise we, for the most part, have a Dem advantage, even in El Cajon. El Cajon, uh, we have 1% registration advantage over Republicans. So theoretically, this election should have gone great. Things should have been wonderful. So I'm just showing now the actual numbers by city. Oh man, I was really trying to make these bigger because these were interesting to me, but um, I put them on a separate slide and they're still small. So again, the place with the greatest uh, voter registration dem for Democrats is National City at 49%. And the one where we have the least number of Democrats is Santee at 30%. And National City is uh, important and interesting because National City is somewhere where we lost the mayorship. San Diego City comes in second to National City with 47%. So in our neighborhood, 47% of voters are registered, well, in our city, 47% of voters are registered Democrats, 
only 21% are Republicans and 32% are other. So Republicans are dead last in registration um, and now don't have a single seat on the board. So uh, next down is uh, Lemon Grove and Chula Vista. So this is interesting to me because we tend to think of Chula Vista as very democratic, but uh, San Diego City is actually ahead of Chula Vista as far as democratic voter registration, second in the whole county. Okay, well, obviously that, um, that voter registration does not always translate into results. And the question becomes why? So map of voter turnout, here is how Dems versus Republicans turned out. So what am I showing here on this map? What I'm showing is where there is a higher uh, percentage of Democrats that voted versus Republicans. Where it is blue, that's where the Democrats voted in higher percentages than Republicans. And where it is red is where Republicans voted at a higher percent than Democrat. This is not indicative, this map at all, about who has the most Democrats or the most Republicans, it's which party votes at the highest level. So if you look at Escondido, Escondido on our map of registered voters is a blue city. It's a very blue city. Well, it's a light blue city. So it's 30, we have a voter registration advantage of Escondido of 8%. So there's 8% more Democrats than Republicans in Escondido. But then when we look at who votes in Escondido, who votes in Escondido, unfortunately, uh, Democrat turnout was 10% less than Republican turnout. And that's going to go a long ways towards explaining the results. So um, in Escondido, our Democratic mayor lost. That was Paul McNamara, and he lost. So um, i trying to figure out how to make that thing, the Zoom thing go away. It's kind of a little bonkers. So you see around the county, for the most part, Republicans turned out in higher number than Democrats, with a few exceptions. Santee was an exception. Now, I don't know about the current political situation in Santee at all. I can't tell you why that is. But Democrats outvoted Republicans in Santee. Democrats also outvoted Republicans here along the coast. And we can speculate about why but it may have something with the might to do with the Mike Levin race. There was a specific reason for Democrats to turn out in these communities more so than other communities, which is we had a balance of Congress hanging in the balance with the Mike Levin seat in these communities. So this would have been an incentive for these particular communities to turn out that perhaps um, the rest of San Diego did not feel. Obviously in Chula Vista, the urgency was not felt um, they had some of the lowest participation with 6%. Now I have again this slide where I thought I'd get some nice big numbers because I made it my full screen. No, no, not, not, it didn't happen. But you can see here that I have it by, um, by who had the highest Democratic turnout versus Republican turnout to the lowest. And the lowest was Escondido. The second lowest was Chula Vista. The third lowest was Imperial Beach. It's worth noting, we lost important races in all three of these jurisdictions. Null is the county. So in all of these jurisdictions, we lost important races. So Imperial Beach, Chula Vista, and Escondido. Um, Consuela Martinez did win her, win her city council seat in Escondido, but um, uh, Jeff Griffith did not. So what did that happen, that depressed voter turnout? What did that do to the percentage of people that actually voted? When you look at who actually voted in these cities, and I'm trying to look at that with everything on here. I have to make this a little smaller. Okay, we'll get out of full screen mode for a minute. So, and when I, we look at what actually happened in those cities, percentage of vote by city. Now this is who actually showed up to the polls. So when you look at who actually showed up to the polls, and I'll make this full screen again. Okay, here's who actually showed up. Who actually showed up to the polls in each of these jurisdictions. Escondido, Democrats did show up more than Republicans because we had such a voter registration advantage, but only by 1%. So that meant Consuelo Martinez got through, but Jeff Griffin and Paul McNamara, who was our mayoral uh, candidate, um, an incumbent, did not. 
In Imperial Beach, again, it, it still went Democrat, but at a much lower level. And um, uh, Paloma Aguirre got through, but our two city council candidates did not. Now, in National City, Democrats still voted at a higher rate than Republicans, significantly so. So why was it that in National City, besides the fact we split the vote, that we lost the mayoral race? Well, that can come down to how the third party candidate, uh, people that are registered with the third party or no party preference voted. So when we look at how people that are registered with the third party or no party preference voted, because they're important too. So we're here just looking at the macro, the big twins, trends between Democrats versus Republicans, but plenty of people aren't registered to vote. So percentage of vote by city, if we look again at national city, 55% uh, of the votes were Democrat, 21% of the votes were Republican, and 23% of the votes were independent. This is who actually voted, not who's registered, not our turnout percent. This is the split of the vote. So what does that say that Ron Morrison is mayor? Well, Ron Morrison must have received a very significant share of the other because he won with 40% of the vote. And Republicans only voted at a rate of 21%. So either we had Repo Democrats flip or we had a vast majority of non-party preference voters vote for the Republican. And the same can be said as true of Chula Vista. In Chula Vista, 49% of the voters are Democrat. Republicans are 27% and others are, are 24. I don't remember the exact percentage that John McCann won by, but it was significant. I think it was close to 60%. So what happened? How did a Republican win? It, you, he would have had to have taken a very, very significant portion of the no party preference vote plus some Democrat votes. Because here we have nearly 50%. All Amar would have had to have done was get the majority of the Democratic votes plus 1% in order to win. And yet he didn't. So clearly, not only was there suppressed turnout, in the turnout that was there, a number of Democrats voted for Republican. So you know what I've been asking myself during this election is for where things, quote, went wrong, was the problem that we didn't have people turn out or that the people that turn out, turned out didn't vote for the Democrat. In the case of Chula Vista, both. They had some of the lowest Democratic voter turnout compared to Republican turnout in the county. Even with that, 49% of the votes are, voters are Democrat. All Lamar would have had to win was all the Democrat plus 2% in order to have been mayor. And yet John McCann is the mayor. So, you know, each city is different. Each situation is different, but overall, um, in general, the turnout this cycle, except in the in the part of the county where the Mike Levin race was occurring, and Santee again, not sure what the what the um, factor was in Santee because I don't know enough about their local politics. Republicans outvoted Democrats, and that outvoting of Democrats turned the color of the map from being majority Democrat to still majority Democrat, but not so much so. So Escondido here, you have Poway. Poway's majority Democrat, but the majority of the voters that turned out were Republicans, or better put, more Republican voters turned out than Democrats turned out. Santee, same thing. El Cajon, same thing. So Santee at least is a Democratic city. We have a 1% voter registration advantage in El Cajon, and yet our Democrats' uh, turnout percentage was minus four. So it was 40% of Republicans turned out, but only 37%. Oh, sorry. 40% of the voters were Republican and only 37% were Democrat. So we lost our races in El Cajon because we didn't turn out. And then in some places in Chula Vista, we still had a, had a majority over Republicans, but we clearly didn't convince even our Democratic voters to vote for the candidate. So obviously different issues in different places, but turnout was a huge factor. And in some case appears to be that, you know, the candidates themselves didn't do as well as overall. So I need to drill a little farther into Imperial Beach. I was helping out an excellent candidate there, Anna Webb, uh, did everything she was supposed to do. And if I look at this, it says that Democrats outvoted Republicans. Uh, we had 13 more percent of the vote in Imperial Beach, and yet somehow Anna, Anna Webb still lost. So the question was, you know, what is it like in her district? Or how did her opponent manage to win over uh, Democratic voters? So 
you know, more work to be done on each of those little races to figure out where things happened. But now I'm going to turn my attention to our area because I think we all care about our area, right? So here's a map by precinct of all of San Diego City. So this is everything going on in San Diego City. And well, all of San Diego County really by precinct. And I'm going to just drill in here on the Point Loma area because that's our area. And what this map is showing is Democratic turnout versus Republican turnout. So I'm actually going to probably, probably should switch back over here for a second just to, because there are some things I want to show you that I don't have on the map yet. So if I look at the turnout, I need to put in Republican turnout in the tooltip and Democratic turnout in the tooltip. So I'm doing this on the fly here. Usually not a good idea. And then our other party preference trick. Okay, great. Okay. So now I'm going to show this map again in big. There we go. This is probably a better way to display this if I can. So going back to our area, our community here is uh, Point Loma and Ocean Beach. So I will zoom in on that. We're gonna go to Ocean Beach. And Point Loma. Let's see where it is. The point. Why am I not seeing Point Loma? Uh, Loma. Loma Portal. Okay, that's important too. What will we call Point Loma besides Point Loma? Okay, so I'm going to put it all here for a second. We'll go to District Two first. So get rid of all and we'll do district two. Okay, San Diego, second council district, there we go. Okay, so we're just gonna look at the second council district. Curiosity as to what we were calling the neighborhood if it wasn't being called Point Loma. Okay, so here's our area. This is turnout, Democrat versus Republicans in our area and it's pretty mixed. There are, there are precincts where there's higher Republican turnout and there's precincts where there are higher Democratic turnout. So the first thing, of course, I do when I look at this map, and this is not the end all be all, this is just what I do. I walked to my precinct for the go team. So I immediately went to this map and thought, oh, I didn't do as good a job walking in the general as it did in the primary. I walked late and I didn't make it to all the houses. Did I make a difference? So I zoomed into my little precinct. So I live in this area of Ocean Beach and I happen to live in, I believe, I have to go in a little closer. I believe this is my precinct. I have the precinct number here, so it's hard to tell. Um, here, here I am. Okay, so in my little precinct, Dem versus Republican turnout, Democrats had a 19% turnout advantage over Republicans. And you can see this map in different area changes. So it really does make a difference from precinct to precinct. While in an aggregate, San Diego City had far better Democratic, had better Democratic turnout than Republican, or no, we didn't. I think they have better turnout than us. And our little district, every precinct is different. So you can affect the turnout. Now, it may not be you, it may be whoever happens to be your neighbors. Some people are more likely to turn out uh, than others, no matter how much you beg and plead. But there's certainly a variety of turnout that happened in our area alone both in Ocean Beach and in Point Loma. There's neighborhoods that have great democratic turnout and there's neighborhoods that have not so great democratic turnout compared to the Republican neighbors. So I haven't had a chance yet to sync this up with our um, Go Team roster, but it certainly would be interesting to see. Now this one, the, some precincts are also just very, very small. So this one probably has Democratic turnout 100%. I'm guessing there's about three or four people in this precinct. So take things that are too dark or too light with a grain of salt. But um, that's kind of the overview of what I was going to show everyone. Does anyone have any questions? Is this at all interesting? And yeah, I'm opening the floor to make it an interactive discussion. That's great. Thank you, Sonara. And yeah, people on either on the Zoom, there's a little button down the bottom, you can write reactions and you can raise a hand. And I think, yeah, Greg, if you want to go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, hi. I, I have both a general question and a specific one. Uh, the general question is, looking at these turnouts uh, that uh, figures that you've mentioned, have you done a comparison during a presidential cycle to try and see the differences uh, in those areas? We always know turnout, especially for Democrats, is always much higher during presidential cycles than off-year cycles like this. And just wondered if you had actually taken a look at any of that data. And then after that, I, have, I do have a more specific question, at least a comment. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I'm not the only one that has. I, as the new council of club president, I've been visiting a number of clubs and people have been bemoaning their ter the turnout in their area. And they say, oh, my God, look at the difference between now and 2018. Turnout is so, so awful. Yes. But in 2018, we had a Republican president. And so Democrats were more motivated. I remember when John asked me to give this presentation, I couldn't help but remember 2014, which was a presidential election year. So people were comparing it against 2018 because that was also a midterm, right? So people said, OK, that was a midterm. This is a midterm. It should be similar. Well, I've been around long enough to remember that before Obama was elected, when it was Bush, people were really, really enthused. And then Obama got elected. And then there was the midterm and it was a disaster. And then there was, well, the, the midterm of his first term. And then there was the uh, midterm election, which is 2014, which was a presidential. At that time, we had 44.8% in the general election in San Diego County. Today, we have 49%. So, you know, there's a number of things we have to look at besides, simply besides whether or not it's a presidential year or a midterm. It really matters who the president in is as far as Democratic turnout goes. Democrats tend to turn out less when our guy's in office. Maybe it's false sense of security. Maybe it's feeling let down because what we wanted hasn't been accomplished. But there's definitely an upswing when there's an opposition party in office to Democratic turnout versus when there is a Democrat in office. So that was the first question. You had a specific one? Yeah, and, and that's going to the national city race. I mean, you've, you've stated the obvious reason why there's a Republican there is that it was a split of the vote between yeah. uh, Mona and, uh, uh, and Jose. Um, but actually, I did some polling in that race uh, beforehand, okay. and you're talking about how you know the independent, at least some Dems, uh, probably went for Morrison. Remember, Morrison did have a track record in the community, been a uh, mayor before. But the polling that I did uh, was looking particularly at the Filipino community, um, uh -huh. and that's where you got a lot of those Filipino Dems who were fairly strongly oriented towards uh, Morrison. So just yes. as an aside, the demographics yeah. are very specific in that area. So just yeah, yes. you were talking about that. That seems to be a fairly big area that I saw in the uh, the pre-polling that I did uh, before the election. Yes, yes. No, absolutely. Every single race is different. And um, you're going to get different results in every race because of that. I also did a poll in National City. I actually did a poll as we were doing it and seeing, you know, what we could break away. Um, and we did better than things were polled. So if I were to look at the National City poll, the National City poll said survey that we would have uh, Ron Morrison winning if nothing was done. I was involved in an opposition campaign against Ron Morrison. Uh, if nothing was done, he was going to win by, um, I think it was, uh, well, we'll check, but he wound up winning by a significant amount less than what was polled. So, you know, Democratic efforts in National City did pull off some of those those votes, but it was kind of a nasty race on all sides. There was negative mail flying against all candidates. So I think that might uh, that might have contributed some to it. But Greg, I, it's a little off topic, but if at a later time, if you want to take a look at this poll and, you know, what people's uh, results were, who would you vote for? We had Morrison coming in at 42 percent, and I think he wound up coming in at 39 percent. So Excellent. it's interesting. Yeah. We should get together sometime because I have a very similar result in the initial poll I ran. So, yes, <laughs> yes. interesting. So we were able to knock that down somewhat, but not enough to get one of the two Democratic candidates through. The vote splitting state still occurred. Yeah, less than 70 votes, of course, they would be mayor. Yeah. So uh, I think there's other questions probably in the chat. Yeah, no, I think Angela has a hand up, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Sonara, um, for our area, what is the percentage of registered voters? Do you have that information or? 
the percentage the meaning sorry the percentage of democrats no party preference republican i'm just yes. kind of curious more yes. about yes. Yes. how the voting went so you want registered or turnout or I, i'm interested voting? in registered and then comparing that to turnout okay well let's go ahead and do that then so here right now um i'm just looking at this and i can look at uh again uh, since we're a kind of a, a mix of a few areas, maybe the, the easiest. Well, city thing. council district two, I think would be. Exactly. Good. That might be the best way to do Although, it. Although again, that includes Claremont, but at least it might. San Diego. And someone had asked in the chat where these maps came from. I made them. <laughs> That's where they came from. <laughs> I made them myself. So that, that yeah, that, there's your answer. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, registered voters, we are 43% Democrat. Uh, and this is District 2, so it's Claremont, Point Loma, and Ocean Beach, uh, Republicans and other. And then just because I couldn't figure out what community we were calling uh, Ocean Beach, I'm going to go into Community SD here, and I'm going to add this to my here. Okay, so here we have. So it's Linda Portal and La Playa. So they've, they've, they've broken out Point Loma quite thoroughly. So <laughs> the fly is 39% Democrats, 32% Republicans. We know that, um, that uh, South uh, Point Loma is more Republican than other places in our area. Loma Portal, 42% Democrat, and Ocean Beach is 48%. So Ocean Beach is our more Democratic neighborhood per registration. Uh, okay. Well, actually, Middletown is of the, of the area. And then into the um voter turnout uh well we'll do voter turnout first voter turnout by city so i'm set a city i'm going to go to city council i'm going to do the exact same thing i did before we're going to collect san diego city okay and then break it down by community which is almost feels like an overbreak of community Okay, so Dem turnout versus Republican turnout in each of the neighborhoods. Now, this is not, this is, does not say more Democrats voted than Republicans. This is just what percentage of us went to the polls. So Democrats percentage went to the polls in La Playa was the highest, but there's less Democrats to go. So that doesn't mean that there were more Democrats at the polls in La Playa than Republicans. We're going to see that on the next slide. So, but Republican turnout was also very high, 73%. Uh, Loma Portal, Democratic turnout, 67% and 66. And here's Ocean Beach, 61% Democratic turnout, but only 55% Repu Republican turnout. I'd like to think that's because we have a nice strong go team <laughs> led by Angela here in Ocean Beach that is giving us that advantage to Republicans. Now, why would people in Ocean Beach vote at 61% versus 64 in La Playa? Age. People who own their homes, who are established vote at a higher rate. There are more renters. I'm saying age, but it really comes down to renters and life situation in Ocean Beach than there are in La Playa. So generally speaking, and this is some analysis I have, but I haven't had a chance to work through, older people vote at a higher rate, homeowners vote at a higher rate, um, more educated people vote at a higher rate. We have lower income communities in Ocean Beach with a higher percentage of renters, we vote at a lower rate than La Playa and Loma Portal. Okay, and now last but not least, who actually got to the polls? So this is what percentage of Democrats voted versus what percentage of Republicans. And you see here, Democrats actually voted at a higher rate than Republicans, <laughs> just about everywhere, and that's a good thing. And then who actually got to the polls? We go to a percentage of voters by city. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna send this over to City Council District 2. Okay. San Diego City Council District 2. And going to look at our communities, which are really granular. And percentage of vote by, by city. And then I'm going to throw in that Dem versus percentage of votes, because that's not on here yet. I find it to be interesting. OK, so uh, final percentage of votes. Again, uh, Middletown. Clearly, that's not very many voters. So if it's 100% of the votes for Democrat, I'm going to just throw in the number of votes here. Whenever you see something suspicious like 100, that means there are two or three voters, right? So always, always take that with a grain of salt. And so I'm just going to go down here and throw in 
the total votes. So you can see that that isn't very useful. Okay, so Middletown, no one voted apparently. Okay, so in Ocean Beach, 55% uh, of the voters were Democrat. S Republicans were only 17%. So how did that happen? We had as good, if not slightly better turnout than the Republicans and far more Democrats were registered. So when we went back and we saw on the uh, percentage of registered voters, we had a high 48 to 17%. And that reflects uh, even more so here, 55 17% and others were, were 27. So we're 55% of the vote. Why is that? Because we're voting at a higher rate. We have a higher turnout than Democrats, than Republicans, and much higher turnout than others. It's really the others where that was taken from. Because 27% of the voters are no party preference, but 27% uh, 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 of the people who voted are no party preference, but 35% of registered voters are no party preference. What happened? When we look at that turnout number for no party preference, something we haven't really been focusing on, at least in this analysis until now, 61% of Democrats turned out 55% of Republicans and only 54% or sorry, 42% of no party preference turned out. And you see that just about everywhere. People who do not register with a party turn out at a far lesser rate. And you know, more and more people register without a party. We have to find a way to reach those voters or convert those voters, because if we don't, you know, well, things can happen. Because when they did turn out in Chula Vista, they voted for Republicans. So percentages of votes here, uh, of course, Ocean Beach looks great because we're fifty-five percent. Loma Portal, we're down at forty-five percent. Why is it forty-five percent? We're still far higher than Republicans at twenty-nine and others at twenty-six. But um, we have a lower base of Democrats to begin with. So that's why Loma Portal is down here. And La Playa, uh, 42%, 33 and 25. So even, by, even though by comparison, by San Diego standards, La Playa is more Republican than most areas, it's still, it's still 8%. We had an 8% uh, greater share of the overall vote than the Republicans did. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for doing this analysis. Um, we had only 10 volunteers for the um, GO team, and that covered Midway, Point Loma, and Ocean Beach. Mm -hmm. They did knock on a lot of doors. We knocked on a lot of doors, but we certainly need to, for two years from now, get more people to volunteer um, to see if we can make sure we get an even larger turnout of the Democrats. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this map, it's really, it's it varies so greatly from precinct to precinct, the turnout. I mean, this is, and, and I think a lot of this may have to do with, I mean, uh, we know from, you know, a lot of past analysis, a lot of this has to do with where we're active. We maybe weren't active here and we were active here. Or, or if we weren't, perhaps, you know, Greg was out there with the teachers union, the teachers union was, but you can, you see that there's a clear difference as we, as we move from here where we had 3% less turnout than Republicans to here where we had 7% more. And what's the difference? I know Angela lives somewhere in here. <laughs> well, no, you know, actually, I'm sorry to say that 330510 is the area where I was in and I knocked on all those doors that were either Democrat or no party preference, but I you know it just varies. I think it's just a more motivated Republican area, to put it bluntly. There were lots of Republican right. signs out. Yeah. Well, and we, we're, yeah, that may be it. Because I was going to say there may be more Republican voters, but this is turnout. This is of the voters that are Democrat who turned out, of the voters that are Republican who turned out. This isn't indicative of who was in the um Yeah, no, I know. But just who turned out. Yeah. I, I'm just pointing out that apparently the Republicans in this neighborhood are strongly interested in turning out. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, because just like we have our go team and our turnout programs, so do they. So they may right, have been targeting right. this one and they may have been targeting this one. So, you yeah. know, we have to we have to take into account what they're doing, too. No, this is great. This is fascinating. Just in the interest of time, we'll take two more quick questions or quick question answers. But I don't know, Sonara, if you're able to hang around at the end. This is just 
fascinating to me, but maybe not to everybody on the call. So if we, if uh, Nicole and Arv, or, or, in fact, somebody put their hand down. So we'll make this the last question um, so we can have time for our other featured speaker. So yeah, Nicole and Arv. Yes, hi, this is Arv. Uh, I also find this a very fascinating analysis. However, the, I, I have a question. Do you have a similar analysis for who is registered uh, it, against the total adult population? Because that 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 is the uh, really area that we we can also address to get these people registered. Thank you. I don't have that analysis, and yes, that would be interesting. <laughs> I could, I could try to come up with it, but I don't, I don't have the numbers of the total adult population of this time to compare it with. So. Okay, you don't often hear that number. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so with that, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap up here for the minutes now, if that's okay. I don't know sure. if you have to run away at the end, but I want to thank you very much. I know it's a lot of time and effort to one, pull all the data down from the registrar, then put it in a tool like Tableau, like you've done, and then be able to do it all on the fly is, is amazing. It's great. <laughs> I didn't know if that would work, but I'm it glad did. it did because we got really, to answer some questions. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, really excellent. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, with that then, um, I'll remove the spotlight from you. And next up, Celsi Taylor is here from Terra Lawson Rima's office. And we, we reached out um, to ask her to come and talk to us today about boards and commissions um, and the importance you know, of of them generally, but also if you're interested in the board or, you know, position, how do you go about it? How to make contact, you know, with Celsi and other staff members um, and what is the process look like? So, yeah, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Celsi, for coming today. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kelsey from Supervisor Loss and Rumors Office. It is spelt Celsi, um, but pronunciation's uh, Kelsey. Um, I'm excited to let you guys know about boards and commissions. Um, so San Diego County enlists over 100 citizen boards, committees, commissions, and task forces. Uh, they advise the Board of Superv Supervisors and county staff on issues of policy, make decisions on behalf of the board, and serve as links to the community. We have um, a wide variety of different boards and commissions. I'm gonna list off just a few um, that I have off the top of my head, which is planning commission, regional planning groups, treasury oversight committee, child family strengthening advisory board, housing authority, North County gang commission, social services advisory board, um, and environmental health advisory board are just a few off the top of my head that I can remember, but you could always check out the county's website of what they have to offer for boards and commissions. We do recommend if you are interested in joining that you attend one of the meetings. So that way, one, you understand um, just the flow of the meetings, when the meetings occur, the time commitment that comes along with actually serving on one of these boards or committees. Um, and then also, even if you go to it and decide that that's not some, a time commitment that you're able to provide at this time, at least you're able to be a link from the community to these boards and commissions. So when somebody asks, you can let them know, point them in the right direction, and you could attend casual, um, casual, casually, sorry. Um, so that way you're able to uh, get connected and stay apprised of what's going on in the community. Um, if you do want to apply to any boards and commissions, we do ask um, that you apply on the county website. And then also there's a supplemental application with district three. Um, if you want to be appointed by uh, Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer. And then there's also some other boards and commission that we don't appoint, but we could always, you know, um, support in some way. So just a quick update. I will also share all of the, um, we had a wonderful webinar hosted by Amanda Berry from my office, who is the person that runs our boards and commissions um, applications and interviews. So I will share her contact shortly in the chat. Um, and I will also share the, the PowerPoint. And then if you go to Tara's Facebook page, the webinar is actually on her Facebook page. It was streamed live. So you can always check out there where all the county employees were there to explain and answer some frequently asked questions from, from there. But I um, can try my best to answer any questions or take them down and get, get an answer back to you. 
Kelsey, thank you. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name at the beginning. No there. Uh, I sh we should have chatted before, my bad. But yeah, so does anybody have any questions generally? Um, and if you do, yeah, please in the um, reactions button at the bottom of Zoom, there's a place there to raise your hand. Um, and first up, yeah, we'll go with uh, Angela. So I'm curious about um, what type of time commitment it often is for these commissions. So they vary. They do happen frequently during business hours. Um, so you would just have to figure out which one is the one that you want to attend or possibly partake in. Um, and then you'll look through there and see when their meetings occur. That's good. And then next up, we have Laurie. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm curious, what kind of um, disclosures do people have to make um, in terms of filing um, any economic interests uh, that could be conflicts with the positions that they're applying for? And what happens if they don't file those documents? That's a wonderful question. Um, a fantastic question. I don't have the answer for it, but I will be sure to flag that for Amanda. Um, she's the one that spearheads this through our office, so she would know um, that answer for you. And I don't want to misquote, um, so I will get back to you on that one. That's good. Any any other questions from people? or And just generally, about Kelsey, I know I did watch the webinar the other night with Tara, which was great. The introduction in particular, I think, was very uh, informative. So even if people don't want to watch the full hour, if they watch the first five or 10 minutes, I think, with the supervisor, explain it. Is, the, is it fair to say that the boards and commissions can actually influence policy? Uh, is it that the supervisors actually listen to what's coming from the board or commission or are the supervisors working out, you know, their policy positions independently? No, I definitely think um, they do pay attention. That's why we take our applications very seriously. Um, you do go through uh, a series of inter interviews. We call your references. We do a deep dive too to make sure that you know your visions align with the supervisor's vision, so that way you're. Um, going to be the best representative of District 3 from our office to help advise on these boards. And, you know, there's so much going on in the county. It's hard for one person to understand fully everything. So these boards and commissions help really get into the weeds of each niche of policy and then be able to present those briefs to the board so that way they're apprised of everything going on within the county. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I was very excited to hear that. Um, and I think also with the change of the governorship, if you like, political party allegiance at the county level, now it's possible to be able to influence that that policy and see you know positive things happen throughout the county, which is great. Yeah, and I see you put yes in for your information there in the chat, which is good. And and yeah, we did post a link on our website as well with the uh, details for this meeting and on our newsletter. Have a link to um, Tara lawson Rima's Facebook page with that video. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm very excited that you guys asked for this because uh, we have been trying to recruit, recruit more applications. Um, and you know, if you don't get the first, like uh, say you applied for the housing authority and you didn't get it, but then that person leaves mid, you know, mid term uh, due to whatever circumstances that may arise, maybe time commitment or whatever, we keep those applications um, so that way we can still, you know, pick from, we have a bench ready to fill any vacancy. So we don't have any em empty spots. We try our best to avoid empty spots uh, in places where we can appoint. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's another good reason for attending the meetings, right? And getting to yes. know who, who's there today. And then when a vacancy, if a vacancy does arise, then you have people top of mind. And if you guys have any questions, um, I put Amanda Berry's information. She is my wonderful colleague, and she knows all the ins and outs of boards and commissions. So she'll definitely be able to answer anything um, that you have, any questions you may have. And if you need any help along the way, she'll also be there to help. That's great. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Okay. So with that, then next up, <laughs> um, oh, some noise in the background there. We will go, we're running a little ahead of time now, which is great. And so I think Brandon uh, McDonald, who most people know, um, 
will talk to us now about the uh, tamales and the Super Bowl. Brandon, yeah, you're on mute. You can, there you go. Okay. Can you hear me okay. now? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you very much for having us. And here's our little, just so that everybody knows, is this, is this, is this, is this, can you read this? I, I can. Yep. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't backwards. So um, we're, of course, volunteers of the Western Service Workers Association. I've seen many of you uh, many times before. It's great to see you all again. Um, I'm here with Bonnie Bruno, and she's our outreach coordinator. She was just at the Hillcrest Farmers Market today, um, signed up about 14 people that want to volunteer with us. And um, for I also wanted to say hello to Lori Saldana because I don't think it's I think it's been a few years since I've seen you and you've always been a great supporter of ours, as have many, many other people in the Point Loma Democratic Club. Um, so thank you all for your support. Um, those of you that don't remember, Western Service Workers Association is a membership association of some of the lowest paid workers in the county. And uh, our members work in restaurants, housekeeping, caregiving. And um, our biggest concerns these days are paying for food and rent at the same time. And I, I caught the very tail end of a conversation when I first uh, logged into Zoom here, um, something about sdg and &E, and I be, wish I could have logged in a little bit earlier. But this doubling of the of natural gas rates is absolutely brutal for our members. And um, so we are doing a, a tremendous amount of utility advocacy through a self-help benefits program that we have. So um, on the one hand, we try to make sure that the bills are fair. Um, on the other hand, we also do a lot of work you know, to deal with other expenses. We distribute about two tons of food every week. Just this last Sunday, we had a general medical session where a volunteer doctor a registered nurse and a physical therapist all volunteered to see our members completely free of charge. So it's dealing with a lot of immediate needs as a means toward an end. And the end is so that we can eliminate poverty. Okay. And so what we do is, you know, we, in addition, we also fight policies that are making us poorer. And, you know, we were the driving force in getting uh, those, those uh, water shutoffs stopped in, um, in 2019 in San Diego before the, um, the pandemic hit, thank God. Um, and we've uh, fought sdg &E through the California Public Utilities Commission before, and, um, and our members are mobilizing to do it again. So um, that's our, our winter survival campaign in particular, is dealing with how are we going to meet all of the needs with all of the people that are coming into our office, um, not able to pay their bills, some 25% of sdg &E ratepayers can't pay their, their utility bills right now. So um, in order to get support for this organization, we have a very delicious way that the Point Loma Democratic Club can get involved, okay? And so we're going to be making 2,000 tamales this year, and they're going to be delicious. They're homemade tamales, and um, we, uh, we, need, we need people to, to make orders. Uh, they're a suggested donation of $20 per dozen, uh, they come by the half dozen, so you can get a half dozen, you can get 10 dozen. Um, we have chicken, we have pork, and we have bean and chili tamales. Uh, the bean and chili tamales are very good. They're also vegan. They have no animal products whatsoever. And you can make your orders by calling this number, um, or um, I believe Ruth, um, I believe you're going to be helping us out, I hope, yes? Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, Ruth, Ruth is on mute, but we'll take that as a yes. Okay, great. Excellent. So, um, so in any case we have, um, and so you can get a hold of any of us and um, it's, it's, it's very simple. We take, uh, we take cash and we also take checks. So those are the two ways that you can get donations to us. And, um, and you're always welcome to come by our office at 3014 Imperial Avenue to drop them off. So um, in addition, we always need volunteers. If you'd like to learn how to make tamales, um, we can, you please call this number and we can tell you how you can be a part of that. Um, and um, we really appreciate the support of the club and anything that you can do to, uh, to help us out. If you'd like to volunteer in a benefits session and, and work to keep people's utilities um, affordable, then please give us a call back as soon as possible. Thank you so much, John. And we really appreciate all of your support. Yeah, no, thank you, Brandon and Bonnie. Thank you. And thanks thank for joining you. today. And yeah, you, you want those orders by the 4th of February. That's right. Uh, yep, yeah, we put them in the newsletter, the number as well. 
Um, and people can, yeah, either call Ruth and or you can email treasurer at pointlomadem.org and, and we'll all work together to make sure we get as many orders processed as possible. Yep, that's great. So thank you. Thank, you. So with, thank you. Yeah. So with that, then we will um, move on and ask, I'll ask Susan here is our next item of business to talk about the Women of Colour Raw event that's coming up at the beginning of February. Right. But before I do that, I'd like to suggest, I know all of our members, everyone wrote the number down uh, for, for Brandon, for the tamales, but I know you're going to lose that piece of paper. So if Brandon would hold the sign up again and if everyone take your cell phone and take a, take a picture of, of the number, that way you'll have it and you won't, you won't lose it. You'll have, you'll have it with you. So, okay. Just, just a, just a minute. All right. Okay. Has everybody had time to do that? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Um, I'd like to talk to everyone about an event that's coming up that started a few years ago by Angela De Joseph. Uh, Women of Color Roar, Roar Breakfast. It's a breakfast. It's an event that brings um, a, elected um, uh, uh, female politicians, uh, uh, candidates, and and uh, also some some male. Todd Gloria is going to be there, um, but it brings a, a we invite a lot of young people from the high schools to come, and we we uh, provide their uh, that experience free to them. Well, this year uh, we budgeted hundred and. We had 197 um, students recommended by um, the schools, which is much, much more than we've ever had. And ex as many of you know, expenses have gone up for these events. They've gone up for um, for women, for food, for 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 everything, for even for the um, spaces themselves. So we're looking for money and support. Um, Point Loma, the, the executive board of, of Point Loma Democratic Club, um, agreed um, to um, to support the event by five hundred dollars, and we are asking the club, since we have so much money, if they would vote to put in another five hundred dollars for this event, and also I'm going to uh, I'm going to make another request that if you can't go and you want support, I put um, a link to how to buy a ticket. You might buy one ticket or two tickets and then donate them back for, um, for members, I mean, for, 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 for students so that we can help cover the costs and we can have, we can get everybody in that wants to come because it is an, it's an amazing event for, for anyone who attends, but I imagine for a young person to see someone who looks like them, like Dr. Dr. Weber, or someone like uh, Karen Bass, who's gonna be there, or Genevieve jones Wright, to see someone who actually looks like them, who has, um, has accomplished uh, so much and affects our policy and our way of life. So I would like to make a motion um, that the club support this event um, by an additional $500. Second the motion. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for making the motion and Ruth for uh, seconding. And is there any further discussion or questions that people would like to ask about the event? Or, or people, I, th I think a lot of people on the call are probably aware of the event. If they haven't been in person, because the last few years of the pandemic, it's been virtual. But to attend in person is, is something, it's a really wonderful event. Um, okay, Angela, yeah, you have a comment? Yes, I just want to speak in favor of the motion and hope that people will vote for it. It's um, a really wonderful event. And again, a key thing of our contribution would be able to be supporting um, many young women to be able to attend it. Yep, that's great. So let's say, yeah, the club, the e-board is in support. Um, we met earlier this month and, and agreed to support it. But to spend more than $500, then we need uh, to take a vote of membership. So the sponsorship level for a table of 10, um, and obviously we can encourage 
club members to go. And then also, if we, if we don't get 10 people who want to go, then also we can donate those positions or um, spaces at the table for students to be able to attend as well. So if there are no more comments, we can move to a vote. And I think the easiest way to do this or attempt to do it um, is just to say, are there any objections for the club going ahead and spending the money to support the Women of Colour Raw event? And hearing no objections, the motion is passed unanimously. So thank you, everybody, for that. And thank you, Susan, for speaking on that. Um, again, we did put some information in the newsletter, and Susan has dropped some links there in the chat um, so people can read more about it. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so with that, we'll move to our officer reports. And so first up, we have Kip. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good to see you in 2023. I think the only business secretary-wise is approval of the October minutes that were sent out with the um, post-meeting newsletter in October. Um, so hoping I could get a motion to approve those today. This is Angela. I make a motion to approve the October meeting minutes. Thank you, Angela. That's good. Second the motion. That's great. Thank you, Ruth. And then it's going back a ways, but I think people may have read them at the time. And if not, you can, you can find them on the newsletter or the website. But if are there any objections, corrections, or amendments to the minutes from October? And hearing none, we shall take those as passed unanimously. Thank That's you great. so much. Yeah, no, Thanks. thank you, Kip. Um, so next up is uh, Angela as treasurer. So speaking of the fact that we do have um, plenty of money at this point, um, our checking account balance as of today is $9,354. And of course, we've just voted to um, give an additional $500 to the Women of Color Roar Breakfast. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about membership. If you recall, our club does our membership at the same time each year. And so you are all of you members out there, you need to renew your membership now. Um, we request renewals be completed by the end of January and that's part of our bylaws. So if you haven't already gone to the website to um, renew your membership, please do so before the end of the month. Um, you also can, if you go to the website, um, you can print out a paper application where you can mail a check-in and all the instructions are provided if you prefer to do a check as compared to doing it online. But I encourage everybody, if you have not renewed already, please uh, get your renewal in. Again, per the club bylaws, if you do not renew by the end of January, uh, you temporarily lose your voting privileges for club business until you do get your renewal in. And if the renewal is not done by March 31st, then you essentially are looked at as a new member and have to comply with requirements of new membership. Um, so at any rate, I encourage everybody to please renew your membership. Um, right now at this point, 37 people have either joined or renewed for 2023. Um, and just to give you the contrast, you know, we had 130 members in 2022. So there's many of you who need to get your membership uh, renewed. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, I think uh, Arv or Nicole have a question. Uh, yes, I think I renewed my, I think I renewed our membership, but I'm not sure. Is there you did. We did. Okay. You did. You're, you're on my list. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, with that, I'm done. That's great. Thank you, Angela. Um, so, yeah, my report, just that very briefly, is um, a big thank you to everybody for all the support you've made with the club over the last two years, of which I've had the great honour to be the president of the club. Um, but just to give you a heads up, that having moved out of the area, it doesn't seem appropriate that I would continue in this role. And so I will be stepping down and not running for re-election of president at our upcoming election in February. 
Uh, but now I'll hand over to the chair of the nominating committee, who has the good news on, on who um, has come forward to be able to serve as officers of the club going forward. That's great. Ruth. Thank you, John. All right. Since you've already told them you're not running for re-election, we'll start with the person that has agreed to become the president next year, or this year, I should say. And that is our secretary, Kip Eisen, has agreed to become the president. Thank you, Kip. And Vice President Leslie Bruce will continue in her position. And Treasurer Angela Hawkins, we will never allow Angela to say no. <laughs> She's the best treasurer. And for Secretary, uh, we have someone that has not been a member of the club in the past, but Mandy Havlick has stepped forward. And uh, I thought since she's not been a member or not been an officer before, we might give her a couple of minutes to say a couple of words. Mandy? Yes. Thank you, Ruth. Um, again, um, I am very honored to be even considered um, just, you know, a Democrat, proud Democrat. Um, I've been very involved the last couple of years. Um, you may know me recently um, as a city council candidate for District 2. Um, I'm a mom of two children. My children go to Ocean Beach Elementary and Dana Middle School. Uh, what got us here is the military. My husband is uh, now retired. He is a Navy combat veteran. And um, him originally being from South Dakota and me being from Arizona, we've, we've arrived in paradise. So it's a privilege to live in San Diego and um, show up for the community in a variety of different ways. Um, I am a community advocate and a volunteer. Um, so I do serve in uh, multiple uh, capacities. I'm currently an elected member of the Peninsula Community Planning Board, which is a land use advisory board for the city of San Diego. Um, I'm also Indigenous and I'm a registered member of my tribe in Quebec, Canada, the Temiskaming First Nation. And um, I've uh, been showing up for the community and a lot of things that I'm passionate about. I'm a big passionate uh, person about traffic safety. Um, I understand the impact that um, lack of traffic safety mitigations in our community, the impact that it has to children and um, those who are transiting our communities. Um, I'm very passionate about the environment and um, just the community in general. I am a, ro a Rotary member. Um, I'm also a member of the La Playa Auxiliary Unit that benefits Radies Children's Hospital. Um, and um, I'm also on the OB Town Council's um, subcommittee, the advocacy subcommittee. So I'm trying to use my mouthiness to <laughs> progress our communities forward in uh, with democratic values and policies that support that. And it's a privilege to learn more about what the local club is doing and um, things in the background when it comes to like the endorsement process and things locally that we can champion around and support, um, whether it be candidates or new policies that we need to get behind and champion for um, the Democratic Party. Um, I'm just really looking forward to getting to know how the club operates and getting to know more of you um, as we all live in the neighborhood. And um, it's great to be around like-minded individuals like yourself. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Mandy. Um, one other comment. We have a, a, we don't have the position on our board of immediate past chair, but John Laughlin has been asked to stay with us and act on our board as the immediate past chair and to help us with any technical issues that may come up that the rest of us aren't handling. John, do you still agree to that? Uh, yes, yes, I'm delighted to do that, Ruth. Yeah, thank you. I knew I wouldn't get away that easily, but yeah, no one else will be around. You won't get rid of me that 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 quickly. That's good. But no, I, I really want to thank everybody. It's been great, you know, serving on the board for the last two years. It's been great, and I, I'm very happy. Kip, Angela, and Leslie, who couldn't be here today, are carrying forward, and delighted to, that Mandy's joining us as well. So it's really is wonderful. I, I do have one question, John. Do I need to send Ruth or yourself like a bio uh, of myself? Is that something that's necessary when you, um, you know, submit the slate to the entire club? 
Yeah, or... we would love. To. Yeah, I can. Okay. And we can put I that will... out of the newsletter and people can read okay. it and put it up on the website as well, Mandy. That'd be All great. Right. I will email that to you um, after yeah. the call. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and just to, just to clarify as well, Ruth, when you mentioned earlier these people, you sounded like it was a foregone conclusion that this is whoever's oh, role. But just no, to explain, no, that there is no. an election, and and anybody this can is, run and can be this, nominated from the floor as well. Yeah. Yes, this is the nominating committee report. Yes. And at the election, actual election next month, each position we will call for nominations from the floor. Because if there's someone else that feels like they've been overlooked and they want to volunteer, we will be happy to have them put their names in the running. Yep, that's great. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you. And thank you, Ruth, for chairing the committee. That's great. Okay. And with that, then, I think the next item we have on the agenda is for if there are any um, elected officials or representatives of elected officials I don't see Doug Case on the meeting, so he normally talks, obviously, on behalf of uh, Senator Tony Atkins. He's not here today. Um, but also, if there are any candidates or anybody else that would like to talk on behalf of a candidate, you can put a, raise a hand in the chat. Nope, I don't see anybody. So with that, we'll move on to announcements. And again, if anybody would like to make an announcement, if you want to raise your hand, um, with the reactions button on Zoom to raise your hand in the in the chat. I don't see any announcements, in which case I would make uh -oh. one. Oh, no, that's a lie. I've mistaken. There are some announcements. Yeah, Mandy, if you'd like to go first. Um, there are uh, two announcements. There are opportunities for um, leadership opportunities. The Ocean Beach Town Council is currently um, accepting applications for their, uh, their board of directors. And um, the Town Council uh, allows people who live or work, um, have a business in the 92107 uh, zip code, they can uh, apply for that position. The applications are due by midnight tomorrow night. But another opportunity that's coming up in March um, is the Peninsula Community Planning Board is also looking for volunteers to um, participate and run for election uh, for the planning board. We are um, a, a local planning board. We give um, land use advisory inputs to the city. And it was um, one of the first ways I was able to show up um, and, and advocate for things that I was passionate about. Um, and so if you're interested in learning more about that, the applications will become available at the end of February. Um, and you can find more information um, at the website, pcpb.net. That's great. And thank that's you, all Matt. I have. Thank yeah, you. No, that's excellent. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, Ruth, you're next. Well, mine isn't really an announcement. We were in the conversation about solar. Oh, so hold that. Hold that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we're we'll doing an announcement in a minute. We'll come back to the solar in just a little second here after we get through the agenda. So, so keep holding that thought that you had from before. And then Sonara, you're next. Okay, hello, hi. <laughs> I know I just spoke earlier, but I wanted to uh, real quick um, speak to you in the capacity of uh, Council of, of Subs Director. So as it was being said before the meeting, I have just been ratified into that position. And I am honored to be sit sitting here today with two uh, Council of Clubs, past Council of Clubs directors, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants with Ruth and John. And um, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, a little bit about what that was and why it's important and why I'm excited to do it. The Council of Clubs director is the coordinator for all of the clubs um, countywide for the San Diego County Democratic Party and your voice on the e-board. So, you know, in this capacity, I'm going to do everything I can to uh, support our clubs, including the Point Loma Democratic Club, uh, to make our clubs stronger and give us a larger voice in the party. So uh, this means trying to um, get club representatives elected to e-board positions, central committee positions, committee positions, whatever it takes to make the voice of uh, the grassroots, which truly is represented by our clubs, stronger in our party. I have been, I have been the South Region Go Team Director for many years, off and on, and you know the you, I've noticed that clubs tend to make the right calls. We are the people, the boots on the ground, that are noticing what's truly needed in the neighborhoods more so than um, people in 
maybe in uh, in a political role uh, beyond that. So, you know, we're the voice of the community. I think it's a very important um, uh, position. It's a very important voice in our party. And uh, I'm excited to represent you. So thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for your support. And yeah, I'll, I will continue to contribute on behalf of this club. If you have any suggestions for me about how the party can better help support our clubs, please let me know. Thank you, Sonara. Yeah, and congratulations again on that position. I think a lot of people are very excited to see you and all the new ideas you'll bring to that to that role. And then, Laurie, you have your hand up next. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you again to Sonara for for your good work to get the clubs going in a in a strong direction as we we get approach the uh, next election cycle. Um, I I wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, I'm not sure how many of you participate in um, city council meetings. We, we talked about boards and commissions at the county level. I hope that you'll have a representative come in from the city and talk about city committees and boards and people being appointed to them. Uh, there were some council rule changes that took place. They were approved last year and, and then introduced to council this year. Um, but one of my biggest concerns is that we start losing our voices as constituents when we want to address uh, elected officials. And one way boards and commissions are important to do that, but I want to remind people that um, calling in to meetings via Zoom, attending meetings in person is still a, a really important part of, of how we let them know if they're not meeting the mark um, in terms of policies that impact our neighborhoods and our communities. So to that end, I actually, um, I'm not a plaintiff in this case, but there is a lawsuit against our city council for failing to hold, uphold the Brown Act, which is the state law regarding public comments. So I'm letting you know that because as we volunteer as democratic club members, as members of other organizations, as we help elect people, I think we also need to make sure they're held accountable to um, uphold the state laws and uh, don't take away the rights of people, maybe inadvertently, but um, whatever the reason. So you may hear some things about lawsuits being filed and um, it's, I, I think it's important that we not only help elect people, that what, then we make sure that they are held accountable if they do violate our rights as people who wanna stay engaged and involved in political action. So. Um, I'll keep you posted as the lawsuits um, move through the process with the city attorney's office. That's good. No, thank you, Laurie, for that. And um, yeah, although, as you mentioned, yeah, you're not the plaintiff in the case. I think the cases did uh, involve when you were attempting to give uh, or speak in public comment sessions before the city council. And regrettably, one of the people asking the council president to cut your microphone at the time was our representative from district two um, we did also reach out here yeah, to our representatives locally to ask them to come and talk about boards and commissions at the city level um, and receive no response from our community members locally but hopefully with our new um, officers in charge from next month onward maybe they'll get more be more be more receptive to some of their outreach um, so just to check Ruth do you have an announcement or do you, are you coming back to your solo question First, I have an announcement. Excellent. Yeah, no, please, please go. I, I yes. was elected to the administrative committee of the San Diego County Democratic Party. In the past two years, I served on the candidate selection committee, and that committee has been terminated. And so uh, now I'm on the admin committee. Excellent. Congratulations, Ruth. Thank you. That's good. And are there any further announcements for today then? No, seeing none, then I think we can move to adjournment. Um, I want to thank you again, everybody, for coming. We will adjourn, but if people want to stay on the call and continue the conversation we had before about solar, we'll come back to Ruth's point that she was just about to make when I, when I interrupted her at four o'clock. And so with that, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, but please stay on if you want to chat a little longer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.